Hey there, and welcome to the more intimate lighting edition of Running Wide Open with Joe Van Hoos. I'm Joe Van Hoos, and that's right, the stars and cars and ass car back at the Daytona International Speedway this weekend. July 4th, it's the Coke Zero 400, powered by Coca-Cola. Saying all that makes me want a Coke right now. So let's just get right into it. It's time for the big deal. The big deal this week could be that Joey Logano, NASCAR rookie sensation, won at Loudoun for his first career victory. He's the youngest NASCAR Sprint Cup winner in history. Even though he did so by getting a couple of lucky dogs, pitting when no one else did, and hence staying out when no one else did under caution as the rains poured down on New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Still, a win is a win. Go ask David Rudiman. He did the same thing in May at Charlotte and I'm sure he's sleeping just fine at night. In other news, another big deal, if you will, is that Bill Weber is out of the broadcast booth on TNT. Enter Ralph Shaheen. Now, he's been around for 20 years and has done basically anything that has a motor and a couple of wheels on it. But this is by far his biggest assignment, and he stepped into the booth on Sunday and did a masterful job. Barney Hall would be proud, I guarantee you that. I don't know why I said Barney Hall would be proud. He's still alive and still doing races on MRN. And he's still the best in the business. But I digress. The biggest deal is that NASCAR is back in Daytona for the Coke Zero 400. And we're going to be there bringing you all kinds of stories on Ocala.com, JoeVanUse.com, and of course a fine little column on uh, Sunday's Star Banner. So be sure to check all that out. Speaking of Daytona, they got a little problem, and I'm going to address that in my two cents. I'm Joe Van Hoos, and these are my two cents. Daytona officials announced long ago that they were not going to open up the backstretch seating, which seats about 60,000 people, for the race this Saturday night. That blows my mind. Because when they started running the Coke Zero, then the Pepsi 400, under the lights, they got near sellouts for a couple of years. But then that crowd started going downhill, and now apparently it's fallen off by some 60 to 70,000 people in the span of, what, 10 years? How is that even possible? That's a problem. Now, there are problems to that July 4th date. Number one, not everybody wants to go watch race cars on a holiday when you're supposed to be blowing stuff up. Number two, it's like 120 degrees in Daytona on July 4th, and that track is just tough on getting a breeze to you. Then there's always the problem of inclement weather. It's Florida. It's near the beach. There's usually a rainstorm every other year. There's always that threat, and that's enough to steer people away. Then maybe the tickets are just too doggone expensive. Maybe the people don't like the races at night. And that means they're going to be getting home at like 4 o'clock in the morning instead of 5 o'clock in the afternoon. There's all kinds of issues as to why this race is not selling well, but the bottom line is, it's just not selling well. Daytona, come on, man. Crown jewel of the sport. Y'all got to get this stuff together. You got to find a way to get people back in the seats. And if that means slashing ticket prices, or altering the schedule, or God forbid even switching up dates, then that's what it takes. Go do it. For the good of the Speedway and for the good of the sport. Because Daytona certainly needs to have two races a year, and it certainly will. But it always needs to show that it still deserves it. I'm Joe Van Hoos, that's my two cents, and this has been Running Wide Open. We'll see you at Daytona and on Ocala.com next week.